now let us discuss about asynchronous or ripple up counter this is the diagram for a 3 bit asynchronous or ripple up counter a counter is just like a register it is a collection of flip flops so here it is a 3 bit asynchronous up counter so we will have three flip flops where each flip flop can store one bit of data here asynchronous counter means the clock pulse will be applied to the first flip flop this is nothing but clock pulse output of the first flip flop will be connected as clock pulse to the second flip flop likewise output of the second flip flop will be connected as clock pulse to the third flip flop etc why this is called as asynchronous counter why because here the flip flops are not driven by same clock pulse so that's why it is called as a asynchronous counter uh, let's see the explanation about this diagram in order to implement asynchronous counter we require a toggle operation so we know about toggle toggle means complementing if the input is zero then toggle means it will be complemented so we will get one as the output suppose if the input is one then it will be toggled so we will get zero as the output so in order to implement asynchronous counter we require toggle flip flops such as we may use either jk flip flop or t flip flop so here totally we have three jk flip flops this is nothing but clock pulse here we have a bubble a small circle that bubble represents the triggering will happen yet the negative edge or falling edge every clock pulse will have two edges the first edge is positive edge the second edge is negative edge if you take this clock pulse uh, here this down portion is called as zero whereas this up this top portion is called as one so positive edge means moving from zero to one moving from zero to one this is called as positive edge positive edge can also be called as rising edge whereas moving from high to low so this is nothing but one this top portion whereas this down portion is nothing but zero so moving from one to zero this is called as negative edge or this can also be called as falling edge here the triggering will happens yet the negative edge triggering means the flip flop will work yet the negative edge so that's why we have bubble small circle so so if you observe here here also we have a bubble we have a bubble so this is nothing but a clock pulse so here we have uh, negative edge next here the values of j and k are 1 so this line represents 1 so 1 is connected to j and k inputs why because we know that in jk flip flop or in t flip flop the toggle will happen when j and k values are 1 likewise when t value is 1 then the toggle operation will happen so that's why 1 is connected to jk one is connected to jk here output of the first flip flop is here an external clock pulse is applied to the first flip flop an external clock pulse is applied to the first flip flop output of the first flip flop is q not that q not will be connected as clock pulse to the second flip flop so this output is nothing but q not where q not represents lsb least significant bit so likewise the output of the second flip flop is q1 that q1 will be connected as this q1 is connected as 
clock pulse to the third flip flop so this is nothing but q1 output so likewise here we don't have any other flip flops so this is nothing but q2 output okay so this is the diagram for a 3 bit asynchronous ripple up counter so why it is called as asynchronous counter because a same clock pulse is not driven on all the flip flops for the first flip flop we are applying one clock pulse for the second flip flop the clock pulse comes from output of the first flip flop for the third flip flop the clock pulse comes from output of the second flip flop so that's why it is called as asynchronous counter why it is called as ripple so ripple means output of one flip flop is connected as uh, clock pulse to the second flip flop so this is called as ripple next this is called as up counter why because it produces the output states in up manner in incremental manner so first it will produce let us take a 3 bit asynchronous counter so 3 bit means totally we will have 2 power 3 so 2 power 3 is nothing but 8 states so totally we will get 8 states starting from 0 1 2 so here we are getting incremental order so that's why it is called as up counter so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 here n value is 3 why because this diagram represents 3 bit asynchronous counter so that's why a 3 bit asynchronous up counter can also be called as mod 8 asynchronous counter asynchronous up counter so why it is called as mod 8 counter why because it is producing 8 states okay so this is the diagram uh, now let us see the waveforms here chote, this is nothing but clock pulse we know that every clock pulse will have two edges one is rising edge or rising edge can also be called as positive edge whereas the second edge is negative edge or falling edge so in the explanation i may use the word negative or falling so both have the same meaning so this is negative edge uh, first clock pulse second clock pulse negative edge third clock pulse fourth one fifth one sixth one seventh one so likewise totally we have eight eight clock pulses totally we need to apply eight or seven clock pulses okay eight or seven clock pulses uh, here these are nothing but outputs what is the output of the first flip-flop q0 next output of the second flip-flop q1 next output of the third flip-flop q2 here this q2 is nothing but most significant bit whereas this q0 is nothing but least significant bit so initially this is nothing but truth table uh, but for space constraints i am writing here after the waveforms we have to draw the truth table but for space constraints i am writing here so initially there is no clock pulse we didn't apply any clock pulse so initially q2 value is 0 q1 is 0 q0 is 0 so 0 means the slow portion so here the output is 0 till we get the falling edge output is 0 output is 0 so this is nothing but falling edge falling edge this is nothing but 0 i am sorry this is nothing but 0 this down portion is nothing but 0 whereas this edge is nothing but falling edge here when we will get q0 output we will get q0 output at the falling edge of every clock pulse we will get q0 output at the falling edge of every clock pulse so here what are j and k values 1 1 so when j and k is 1 1 and at the negative edge of the clock pulse what will happen the output will be toggled so this is nothing but negative edge so output will be toggled so now what is the output 0 so now it will be toggled it will become 1 it will become 1 it will be 1 till we get the falling edge of the next clock pulse so this is nothing but first clock pulse this is nothing but second clock pulse so till we get the second clock pulse this output will be high output is toggled here we have 0 now here we have 1 so this is nothing but first clock pulse so during the first clock pulse what is happening q0 is toggled so 0 e change to 1 so q0 this is nothing but q0 lsb this is most so now q0 is 1 here next when we will get q1 here q1 is depending on q0 
q1 is depending on q0 so in q0 waveform at the falling edge at the falling edge of the q0 this q1 will work q1 will displace the output likewise q2 will depends upon q1 so yet the falling edge of q1 at the falling edge of q1 so whenever the falling edge of q1 is triggered then we will get the q2 output okay so now so during this transition here we didn't get any falling edge of the q q0 so this output is low only so here q2 depends on q1 but we didn't get any falling edge of the q1 so now q2 is also zero so q1 is zero as well as q2 is zero so this what is the decimal equivalent one is the decimal equivalent 001 initially we will get zero state next to one state likewise we will get from 0 to 7 so let's see whether we will get that or not so we know that this q not will work yet the falling edge of every clock pulse here we have falling edge this is nothing but falling edge this is second clock pulse so yet this is first clock pulse next we are at second clock pulse so yet the second clock pulse uh, this q not will work yet the falling edge of this clock pulse so now what will happen previously the value is 1 up now it will be toggled so toggled means toggled means now it will be low it will be low how long till we get the next falling edge of the next clock pulse so now previously it is 1 so now it is 0 now it is 0 so now it is 0 so 1 is becoming 0 now next here q1 is depending on q0 so whenever whenever the falling edge of q0 is triggered so this is q0 waveform here we got the falling edge here we got the falling edge here we got the falling edge so now what will happen so now what will happen the output will be so this is nothing but if we if we observe here this is nothing but falling edge so what is falling edge what is falling edge moving from high to low high to low so high change to low now so now we got falling edge at q not waveform so now this will be uh, this clock pulse will be applied to q1 now so now what will happen the output of q1 will be complemented now so previously the output is low so now the output will become high now the output will become high how long it will be high until we will get until we will get the next falling edge of q not okay so next so now wh what is happening during this clock pulse what is happening so here we are changing the q1 value so q1 value is changing but what about q2 there is no change in q2 value why because when q2 will occur when q2 will produce the output during the falling edge of the q1 but we didn't get the falling edge so this output will be low only so this output will be low only so this is nothing but second clock pulse so at the second clock pulse we have we got two as the output we got two as the output next let us apply the third clock pulse let us apply the third clock pulse here we we have the falling edge so what will happen now this low will be changed to high so this way this output is high until we will get the next falling edge so now what will happen this zero is converted to one this zero is converted to one next next when q1 will work q1 will work at the falling edge of the q0 but this is not the falling edge this is rising edge so it will be so it will be as it is only it will be as it is only there is no change in output of the q1 so write that output as it is 1 next this is nothing but 0 0 11 is nothing but 3 0 11 is nothing but 3 next let us uh, let us think about q2 so when the q2 will work when the q2 will work yet the falling edge of q1 but we didn't get the falling edge of the q1 so keep q2 as it is so keep q2 as it is so that q2 value is nothing but 0 so let us apply one more clock pulse now let the clock pulse is fourth clock pulse so now we got the falling edge so what will happen now this the output will be toggled so here the output is 
now this one will be changed to zero as long as we will get the next next falling edge next falling edge so now this output is changed to zero now if we observe here now if we observe here here we got the falling edge here we got the falling edge so what will happen now if we got the falling edge then the q1 will the q1 will produce the output so now this output will be toggled so this output will be toggled this output will be toggled so till we get the next falling edge of the q0 next if we observe here if we observe here we got the falling edge high to low high to low we got the falling edge if we observe here what is q1 value what is q1 value if we observe the previous one what is q1 value yeah previously what is q1 value previously q1 value is 1 so now q1 value is toggled so now q1 value is 0 q1 value is 0 so we got falling edge at q1 so it will be uh, produced as uh, it will be supplied as clock pulse to the last flip flop so now what will happen this output will be toggled now this output will be toggled now so till we get the next falling edge so this output is toggled this is nothing but 100 100 is nothing but decimal number 4 if we observe here the diagram is very very simple so here the q0 will be toggled at the falling edge of every clock pulse so we can write it as down up down up down up down up down up down up down likewise whereas coming to the q1 q1 will work at the falling edge of the q0 here after every two clock pulses after every two clock pulses the q1 will work so here we have the falling edge so this output is toggled now now here we have the falling edge so this output will be toggled now here we have the uh, here we have the falling edge so the output will be toggled now so two clock pulses two clock pulses low two clock pulses up two clock pulses low two clock pulses up if we observe q2 q2 four clock pulses so first to four clock pulses it will be low next to four clock pulses it is high very very simple so low high low high for every clock pulse whereas coming to the q1 it is low in the first to two clock pulses up in the next to two clock pulses low in the next to two up in the last two whereas coming to the q2 low in the first to four clock pulses up in the remaining clock pulses here if we apply fifth clock pulse then directly we can write the output so phi means we will get output as 101 phi means 101 so what is phi 101 so this is 1 so this is 0 this is 1 so likewise 6 means we will get output as double one zero. Seven means we will get output as triple one so this is about a 3 bit asynchronous up counter a 3 bit asynchronous ripple up counter or we may call this as mod 8 counter also why because here 3 bit so 3 bit means maximum we will get 2 power 3 8 states from 0 to 7.